Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stephanie Stevens Show. I am Stephanie Stevens, and today on my show, we are talking about mental health issues and a lot of other issues that concerns the young LGBT pronoun community. And today I have invited two young men on my show to share their experience of what they're going through with their mental health issues and sort of anxiety, depression, things that young people are suffering from today. And we want to help educate other young people from their story about what they're going through and how to cope, just in case if they are feeling the same way. So I just want to say welcome to the show, Mr. Um, Adam Kennedy and Brandon Wheeler. How you guys doing? I am doing amazing. Doing great. Thank yeah. you for asking, and thanks for having us here. It's very amazing. Oh, wonderful. Oh, for sure. You know, you guys look great. You look so cute. Thank you. You know, Thank it's you. Pride. Happy Pride Month, you know? Yeah. Well, Gotta be proud. Is, well, this is Pride Month. Now, how do you guys feel that now, is it your first Pride? No, I've been there many. Yeah. Hmm? I can't hear you. I've been through many Prides already. Oh, you've been to many Prides already. Okay. Yeah. And now, how do you feel this year that Pride is not going to happen? I think Pride now, is, uh, we're starting to lose the sense of it. We're just thinking it's a parade downtown. We've lost mm -hmm. the true essence of what it means, and it's to love ourselves, to love each other. And we could do that from, you know, our home, in front of our home, with our friends and peers, you know, mm -hmm. online, you know? Okay. So, Brandon, how do you feel about There's No Pride? Have you ever been to one? Yep. So, I've actually been to Pride um, many years. Um, I've been as, like, myself, and then I do drag as well. So, I've mm -hmm. been in drag. And, I mean, it's been an amazing experience because the one time I went, um, people wanted pictures. And so that, that was very, like, you know, appreciative of people to want to stop me and take pictures. However, it took me, like, a half an hour just to get to a club. I guess people just thought I was that pretty. So oh. <laughs> that's nice, right? That I mean, nice. it's flattering, so. Mm -hmm. So now, you guys, Adam, now, when I first talked to you and I asked you to do the show, you actually told me no. But then I came back again and I just said, well, you know, you can help teach other, other young people about your experience and then you sort of changed your mind and i just want to say thank you for doing that now first and foremost um do you work do you work adam right now i'm not working but um i used to work uh, i got laid off on march uh on mid-march mm -hmm. um ever since then i've just been uh trying to find like a meaning to my life a more uh kind of which path I want to go, you know, what things I need to do, you know, like you could just, how does that decorate my room, you know, get in mm -hmm. touch with the things that I love to do. Now I have all the time to do it. Okay. Now, how are you, how are you feeling since you lost your job? How are you really feeling? I'm feeling less stressed. I have to deal with no customers. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Now, do you miss the job? I miss the good things about it, yes. It's always going to be good things about a job that I miss, for sure. Okay. Now, but now I feel like I'm going in as a stronger person. I've found myself even more now that I've had all this time off. Okay. So that's, so basically you have time, more time to spend with yourself and understand yeah. yourself. You know, I mean, because sometimes when we, I live, see, I live alone. So I have a lot of time to think and to think about what concerns me, how I feel. And yeah. being alone sometimes can make you have a clearer understanding of that. Mm. Um, now, just for you, for you again, Adam, now, do you live at home or do you live on your own? I live with my mom. Okay, so how is the relationship between you and your mother? It's like a mother son, we're amazing, you know, but when it comes to, you know, being gay, it's more like a don't ask, don't tell. Like, she knows, but she doesn't want me to have people over, guys over, you know, she doesn't want to know about it. But she'll love me still because I'm a son, kind of thing. Okay. 
Okay, that's wonderful. Well, you know, it's great when parents accept you because trust me, I was transitioning and my parents knew everything about me. I'm gonna be honest with you, Adam. My parents never shut the door in my face and they never closed me out of a conversation. <clears throat> if I wanted to talk about anything, they were there. They never mentioned the gay thing to me, the transitioning thing to me, ever. And they're both in heaven now. And I thank God, even after their death, they took care of me. They thought about me enough to make sure that I was okay even when they were gone. So it's a good thing when we have supportive parents. But we as young people must understand sometimes parents aren't going to always be on the same page with us when there's something that they really don't understand. Because sometimes parents are just used to things being the norm for them. And when their children are a little bit different, they don't know how to quite handle it because the stresses of going to work raising a family, trying to prepare for their future, your future, and the fact of just dealing with everyday life. We understand that. Now, when did you know that you just didn't feel right? Oh, I knew before I could talk. I mean, I knew from like way, way, way young, you know, before even kindergarten, I was just like, I, I, I was looking at the boys and I was not looking at the girls. Oh. You know? I was not looking <laughs> at the like boys. <laughs> and I only thought that I was the only boy because they were talking about, you know, all this stuff in like grade one, grade two, or which girl do you like? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really like any girls, but I didn't want to open up because I thought it was just me, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, so up until grade you... six, I thought that, you know, I was the only boy in the world who liked boys until somebody called me a name, and now I knew what I was. So I, I mean, in a sense, I felt insulted, but at least I know what I am now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you feel, is there anybody in your family that just understands you? I feel like my sister understands me. I mean, she loves me too, you know? Mm -hmm. She's my younger sister and a year younger. Um, that's about it as far as family. Friends, they all accept me, they all know me, they, you know, Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Now, what is it that you feel you have a you have an issue with? You say, with, like last month was actually mental illness month. What is it that you feel is the issue that you have? What is it that the issue is? Well, um, I'll say a few things that I'll, I'm going through is for sure depression, anxiety, um, OCD. Um, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Anxiety and depression for sure all the time. It's more like, how do I go with it? How do I mask it? You know, how do I deal with it? And mm -hmm. it's not always there, but when it does come, how do I deal with that type of thing? Is it, is it, is it something that um, stems from you being gay? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. So Feel different. Mm -hmm. Or just feeling different. Okay. Now, how are you actually coping? Are you doing okay? I, to be honest, I don't have any good coping skills. I just take the anxiety that I feel walking down the street and I turn it into sort of um, a dare to go outside and a dare to be myself mm -hmm. and turn it into more of an adrenaline rush, you know? Mm -hmm. you, know like you, you, you know, Adam, I learned, <clears throat> I learned something when I started transitioning. It was different than when I was just understanding that I was just gay. But then when I started transitioning and having to dip to, to, um, into the world, looking different and trying to feel like who I think I am. Now, I found that the anxiety was high. But you know what? I didn't have to see a doctor for any of that. What made it easy for me which is a lot different from a lot of other people, is that I just put myself out there. And sometimes that's what we have to do. And sometimes we need a doctor or we, I, for me, when, um, Adam, I've never thought medication was the key. I sometimes just feel